Hello, families. This is Lisa giving you greetings from Maryland. Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone today? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God is able. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He gives me joy in my spirit. And joy in my soul. Today, everyone, I'm coming to you, praising God and thanking God and lifting God up. And because the Lord God Almighty wants to be reverenced, He wants to be thanked, He wants to be praised. He is worthy. He is so worthy. He is the air that we breathe. He woke us up today. Let's praise the Lord for He is good. Sing a new song. And to the Lord, everybody, lift them up, no matter what you're going through, regardless. The enemy is under our foot, in Jesus' name. Everyone, I'm coming to you today about a serious subject that has plagued everywhere. This is about bullying. I mean, give you um, things and let's talk about what God says about bullying and dealing with um, this bullying issue, whether it's in schools, um, uh, wherever we are, on jobs, different areas of our lives, different levels, personal, business. You know, bullying is a bad thing. It's a bad spirit to have on you if you're bullying someone. In Jesus' mighty name, let's welcome God into place to cover us first and foremost. Heavenly Father, we welcome you, Yeshua HaMashiach, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father. Lord Jesus, that people feel the anointing over this message, that you're touching others, whether they're being bullied or they're the bullier. Lord Jesus, just touch me, anoint me with your wine, corn, and oil, the Holy Spirit to speak through me. I welcome you in this place, Holy God. Lord, I petition the course of heaven to send Michael and those warring angels, Father, with all their flaming swords, all rankings of divisions, and the nets that cast every unclean thing, bullying spirit, every unclean spirit named or unnamed Lord, into a dry place. Receive nothing in this place. This must die by your fire. It is boarded. The assignments are boarded and canceled. The enemy is deafened and blinded. I'll show the faith is up. Blind the enemy, Lord. All spirits, Father, that's trying to witness our daily plans, Father, and just let the will of you be done in us, Father. Lord, all spying, demonic entities that's trying to spy on us in our lives, Father. Lord Jesus, that's trying to watch everything we're doing. Father, may you deafen and blind the enemy this day. In Jesus' mighty name, you are the one we praise, or should I? We seek your face, holy God, for protection. This video is covered in the blood. May your families be covered in the blood. We cannot mix darkness with light, but we, 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 we petition the course of heaven for Jesus. To remove all things that try to come up against us. You ask God to put on the full armor. To put on your helmet of salvation. Lord, we ask you for the helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. To shod our feet with the preparation of gospel peace. The belt of truth. The gird our loins. Father God, we ask these things for Psalms 91 protection. He that dwelleth in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Lord, if God be for us, who shall be against us? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against us in judgment, the Lord thy God shall condemn. Do not be afraid. God has you, everyone. He has your back. You just ask the Lord for his protection. Read your Psalms 91 every day. Ephesians 6, 13 through 20 every day. 
for your full armor. God, and you go believing that you protect it for the blood with the blood of Jesus. And if you haven't given your lives over to God, please give your lives over to the Lord and believe in his death, resurrection, and burial. Jesus will cover you with his blood. You believe it from the depth of your soul, whole heart. We love the Lord thy God with all thy might, all thy heart, and all our soul. He is our strength. He is our comfort and weakness, everyone. So be encouraged. Okay, um, I'm referencing this from Patheos. It's www.patheos, P-A-T-H-E-O-S dot com. It's Bible verses about dealing with bullying. Luke 6, 27, 28. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If you are being bullied, either as a child or a teen, or even as an adult at work, don't seek to get even, seek to pray for them. Jesus said, we are to pray for those who are bullying us. And we know that that's not easy to do. You say, well, Lord, how do we? I do that when I feel hatred in my heart? Jesus say, leave it to him. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Jesus say, look to him from which cometh your help. We, we can't do things in our own strength. We can only do things through the strength of the Lord. He says, my grace is sufficient for thee. That means he is more than enough. He gives us our strength that we need. He's standing in the gap for us to fight our battles. Let vengeance be for the Lord. We don't want to take it into our own hands. We want to leave it to God. That's not easy, but it's biblical. This is the biblical principle. Pray for those who hate and ask God to bless those who curse you and abuse us, but it cannot be done in our own strength. As I just said, we can't do this in our own strength. This is God's strength. We can do all things through Christ who strengthen us. Philippians 4.13. It takes the spirit of God to enable us to do good to those who do bad things to us and to pray for God's blessing on those who are cursing us. Therefore, as Jesus said, we might love our enemies Knowing that at one time we were enemies of God, but the truth is he died for us so that we may be spared the wrath of God. In Romans 5, 10, see, Jesus died on the cross. You have to remember that on the cross, Jesus was being mocked and he was being crucified. You know, the Romans, they were telling him to come down from there, save himself. They put crowns, a uh, 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 thorn on his head saying that. If he was the King Jesus, if he was a liar, save himself, they mocked him and they ridiculed Jesus. Because they feel like he should have been able to come down on the cross and save himself from being tortured. But this was the will of his father. He had to go through this process so that he could be out sin debts to pay the cross for us, for the mission of our sins, that we may live and have eternal life. And he told his father, who was God, he said, um, Abathana, Eli, Eli Abathana, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? You know, he knew that he had to be persecuted. So people are going to persecute you, whether you're um, Christian or not. You know, they bully you. They, 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 people were bullied in the Bible. But Jesus said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. He said, uh, uh, um, um, Romans 12, 18, if possible so far as he depends on you, live peaceably with all, beloved. Never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Hey, look, you don't have nothing to worry for being if you're being bullied. You go in prayer, you go in oneness, you learn how to pray, the Father's prayer, our Father which are in heaven. And you leave the, the, the vengeance to the Lord. We're not to take on vengeance ourselves. 
We are to leave this in God's hands. God knows all things. He sees all. He knows all. And he will correct those who are bullying. If we seek revenge on someone who's been bullying us, then we are taking over the judgment seat of God and making ourselves as God. See, we're not God. We don't belong to ourselves. There's only one God, the true Messiah, the true and living King. And if we take things in our own hands and try to um, repay, then we play in the role of the Lord. That's for the Lord. That's the Lord to do, to take vengeance, not us. We get ourselves in all kinds of problems when we take it on ourselves. Okay, everyone. The throne of God is not a two-seater. It's not two seats. It's one because it's one God. One God, one faith, one mediator is one God. God and the Father are one. Jesus told me, he said, I and the Father am one. So it's only one. One God. We cannot be God when we take a matters into our own hands. We can't look into people's hearts, but God can. See, God can search the heart, like in Hebrews 4.13. By trying to seek revenge on our own, we're telling God, God, I don't trust you enough to ensure that justice is done, and so I will make sure of it. How tragically that will turn out. See, that will turn into a tragic thing. That that, that can uh, end up being tragic. If, if we're telling God uh, uh, we don't trust God, see, that's the action that we're conveying to him. When we don't uh, um, allow God to be God and, and, to, and to have his vengeance on our en enemies and our adversaries, all we do is we pray and ask, cry out to the Lord, be at one with you. You can get on your knees and cry out to the Lord to help you. If it's too much, you feel like it's too much. God is not going to give you more than you can handle. His grace is sufficient, meaning he's more than enough for us. Matthew 5, 44, 45. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. See, your father, when we do this and we pray for our enemies, our adversaries, God, he blesses us. He take care of our adversaries, our enemies. He's under our foot. See, Jesus sits on the right hand of the father. He's bigger than any devil. He's bigger than any bully. See, the God will take his vengeance. We're just to pray and bless, you know, these people, which is not easy. That's why you ask God to help you with this. Jesus reminds us that we are more like the sons of our father if we love our enemies and pray for our persecutors. Remember that. Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, he was praying this to the Father in heaven when he was being crucified on that cross. And you can say that. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Go to the Bible and read it. Luke 23, 34. While Jesus was dying in agony, these was the words that he murmured. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was asking his father to forgive the people because they don't know the seriousness of things. He prayed for those who were murdering him unjustly. By praying for our enemies, we are doing what Jesus did while on the cross. See, when we pray for them, we pray just as Jesus did. You know, and that's great. That's a good thing. Jesus was being persecuted, taunted. Uh, uh, um, tortured, but he still was praying to his father in heaven while this was happening to him. So we go to the father in Jesus and pray with our whole hearts, cry out to him with every strength of your being for Jesus to help you because he takes vengeance. We get into all kind of trouble when we're doing things in our own strength. Taking things into our own hands. 
But of course, his prayer was exceedingly more difficult being an excruciating pain. See, it's painful when you're being ridiculed. It's painful for when you're being teased. You're being taunted for what you may look like or act like or, or how you dress or um, how you perform or anything. Because people can choose anything to taunt. You know, this is an evil spirit that's so on people that only God will remove. God will remove this, the power of the Lord. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, his power is in us and through us. He will deal with it. And, and it's through the blood of Christ, where his power comes through the blood, that Jesus will save us and heal us from these things. Psalms 138.7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand delivers me. See, in this, the psalmist had enough confidence to know that God would preserve his life. Even when enemies to his life and to his right were coming at him, the psalmist knew that Jesus was going to take care of his enemies. He was to just pray for them. He wouldn't deliver himself. You know, the psalmist, like those who live with bullies, walk in the midst of trouble. But if we think of this, their future, we would be more kind and compassionate even to our enemies. Revelations 20, 12 through 15. And give them what they don't deserve. Love and pray that God might save them. See, you ever heard of treating evil with kindness? Somebody might not like you. You could say, God bless you. You know? You just treat them with kindness. God bless you. Jesus bless them. The enemy is under my foot. Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly places. See, these are evil forces and God will deal with them. We don't have our own strength. He gives us power. God is our power and our strength to deal with the evil. When we are dealing with enemies, we might try to remember that they are the influence of God of this world who has blinded them to the glorious gospel, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. So since the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. 2 Corinthians 4.3, pray for them to be saved because that's God's desire. See, God's desire for people to be saved. You know, to come out from their wicked behavior. Like in uh, 2 Peter 3 9, while God ever saved me, still remains a mystery to me because I was ungodly and wicked and natural enemy of God. But Jesus still died for me, Romans 5 10. He gave me what I didn't deserve, which is grace, and kept back from me the wrath that I deserve, called mercy. See, we all deserve death, but when Jesus died on the cross, that's life. He's life to us that we may live eternal joy and eternal peace. Leviticus 19, 18. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. See, Jesus said, love the neighbor as thyself. See, this, this, this is very important for us to do. The idea that we're not to take vengeance upon others is not new. This is law was in the Old Testament instructed the nation of Israel to not seek revenge because that could lead to family foods. See, this could this could lead to all sorts of things. We're not even to hold a grudge against our neighbor uh, because Jesus said that if we hate our brother or sister, we are murdering them in our hearts. See, Jesus is concerned with our hearts. So he says, as a man think of so is he. So Jesus wants us to bless our adversaries, the people trying to come against us. He will handle the rest. It's this, when we're taking uh, avengers and holding grudges towards one another, this causes um, division amongst us. This causes feuds with one another. This causes uh, devastating things to occur, events to occur. So we must not take this in our own hands 
But pray for our enemies who spitefully use us and persecute us and abuse us. Romans 12, 20, to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. See, this is when you turn that thing around. See, what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it around for, for your good. You know, so you, 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 you be good to those that persecute you. We are told to do good to those who do or say bad things to us and to pray for those who hate us and love those who persecute us and curse us. But now the Apostle Paul writes that if we see an enemy who's hungry, thirsty, show compassion as God did for us. Give them something to eat. See, God said that show compassion. Bless you. You know, somebody say something to you, to you bad, bless them. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm going to tell you something. Years ago, I worked in a job, and a young lady didn't like me. She didn't, she didn't like me for no reason. Never did nothing to the young lady. She was like, I don't like Lisa. Okay? But when that young lady birthday came around, I gave her balloons. I gave her a card. She, was, she didn't know how to take me. And people was telling her, see, Lisa is not a bad person. See that? How nice she was to you. See, it's a, a spirit that's on people. And a lot of times, people don't know how they, why they're even acting the way they're acting. But this is a spirit that's on people. It's an evil spirit that's governing them. It's not the person. It's the evil around them. That's why Jesus said, bless your enemies. Do good to those who curse you. See, you you can you cannot lose when God is on your side. You pray for them each and every day daily. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Same as Jesus prayed on that cross when he was crucified. Asking the, the Father in heaven to forgive his enemies that was uh, torturing him and persecuting him. It's not easy, but that's why you have to keep praying to the Lord. To help you with your daily um, things that's going on in your life. It's pray, pray, pray. Accept the Lord in your heart. Ask God to forgive them. Ask God to help you to forgive your enemies. He makes our enemies that footstool. When an enemy try to come up against you like a flood, the Lord thy God raises a standard against them. The language is about burning coals. See, for us to give them something to eat and drink, it may, it may leave an opportunity to introduce the bread of life, John 6, and the living water, John 4, found in Jesus Christ. See, read the book of John. He satisfied forever and they shall never thirst or hunger again. The language about the burning coals simply refers to letting their conscience work on them but by all means, don't respond to kind and, and, and kind and be overcome by evil. See, when you take vengeance on your own self, you become an evil with them. See, that's why Jesus said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Don't take the vengeance in your own hands because then you will become evil. And then that would be a whole big mess of things. So we go in oneness and we pray. You go and ask um, the Lord God Almighty to help you to bless your enemies as he did. You know, it could be your supervisor or your employer that's bullying you. You go to God in prayer to ask them, help them to keep them from bullying you. To take this, remove this bullying spirit off of them. You know, to, to, he said, I will repay, says the Lord. Let the Lord repay. But we are not to take vengeance. We are to bless our enemies who persecute us. I know this isn't easy. But if you would try this, you pray for them, you bless them. God will take care of it. He will. I know. He's a God.
He's a God that's possible. Nothing's impossible. He says anything too hard for me. Nothing is. Jesus will handle your enemies. He will handle the bullying, the taunting, those who are taunting you. As he was taunting in the Bible, you go believing and you trust God. And I want to say a prayer for you before we leave. And you can share this video. It's going to help save someone. Father God, we thank you. You welcome you, Father. We thank you. We glorify you, Lord. You are omnipotent, omnipresent. Yeshua Hamashiach, Yahweh saves, Yahweh heals, and Yahweh delivers. Lord God, may you deliver evil from those who are bullying one another, Lord. Jobs, um, all walks of life, places we go, schools, anywhere there is bullying issues, Father. Those who are bullying, Father, correct them with your rod of correction, Father. And Lord, give us peace for those who are being bullied. The people that are being bullied, let us help us to bless our enemies, Lord, for you make them our footstool. You vengeance is yours, saith the Lord. You will be paid. Not us, Lord, and let your will be done in our lives, Father, for each and every person, Father. Heal their infirmities and iniquities, Father. Center their minds with your plumb line, Lord. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me. Yes. So everybody, in Jesus' name, Yeshua HaMashiach, we praise Yahweh because he heals, he delivers, he got you, he know all things, he will repay, and we are to bless our enemies. Just thank God and know. Believe it and receive it. Go get the gusto. Grab it. Grab what Jesus has for you, everyone. Believe it and receive it. Speak life over your situation, not death. The enemy is under your foot. The Lord is our shield and our buckler. He is covering us with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust. Michael and the warring angels and petitioning warring angels from heaven to come down with their flaming swords to cast every unclean thing into a dry place. We turn nothing in this place and must die. By the fire of Jesus. And that Jesus may cover us with his blood. We are sealed in the blood of Jesus. You ask Jesus to seal you in his blood covering. In Jesus mighty name. There's power and oneness in Jesus Christ. Have faith of a mustard seed. The substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. I love you all. May God bless you real real good. May he bless you real real good. May he bless you real real good. You are blessed. You are a child of God. The enemy does not have authority over you. Jesus has authority over you. Give your lives over to him if you haven't already. And accept him in your whole heart as the living Christ. Our sacrifice. Our ransom who died for the mission of our sins. Who rose on the third day. Yeshua HaMashiach. God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Emmanuel, God is with us. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. You go believe in and receive it. But you have victory today is mine. I told Satan to get there behind. Claim your victory, everyone. Claim your victory. The enemy is under your foot. What can no man do to me? Jesus said man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word of the mouth of God. The enemy is under your foot. God has it. That vengeance be with the Lord. Vengeance, he say, I will repay. You leave it to God, you pray for him. Pray for him. I pray for peace and oneness, for healing in your minds, your spirits, your bodies, and souls, that you're covered in the blood of Jesus, that you're sealed in the blood of Jesus. Walk in the light. The beautiful light where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus is light of the world. He's light from your darkness. Don't look into the dark. You look to the light, which is Jesus. The head of the corner. May God bless you all real, real good. This is Lisa coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And you are blessed by Lord, the Messiah, the risen King. Everyone, I love you all and go with the love of God. Bye-bye, y'all. See you next time. Praise God.